you said on Thursday afternoon, which on reflection you wish to retract or express differently? The first of five brief questions. Your research explores innovative activity in this city region and others. Isn't this plan out of step with scholarly advances that you yourself have helped to drive forward and with the university's efforts to connect not only with Toronto, the city and the region, but also with important directions in which the world continues to evolve. Strategic approaches are unobjectionable in, in approaching um, cost, in, in cost containment and university enhancement. You've indicated an openness to what is emerging in the wake of this plan, to ideas that, as you put it, get us to the same place, but in ways that will be more palatable to the community. This seems an acknowledgement that the width, width and the depth of the vision suggested in the plan are not what you and others hoped they would be. And that in addition to more palatable, we need financial and intellectual coherence. We need compelling and we need inspiring. You've also announced that plans for working groups on key portions of the academic plan are stalled. With respect to the proposed School of Languages and Literatures, for instance, is the name all that is holding place? Is the floor really and truly open to us to gather thinkers of diverse stripes for true dialogue to think together with sufficient time and energy once again on our sides? At a moment when we welcome substantial funding to colleges to spearhead the design and delivery of first-year undergraduate courses and experience, and when we're welcoming the launch of a stepped-up advancement campaign. What about the Faculty of Arts and Science? Why is FAS clearly a revenue driver and a university enhancer of the first order on this campus, and clearly in need, not receiving new and notable support? Document in that it does try to integrate 
uh, human resources, with finances, with enrollment planning, with um, lots of specific initiatives around undergraduate and graduate education in particular. Um, and yes, there's no question that uh, in the conversations that we're already having and will soon be having, uh, there will be, I think, opportunities to provide more detail about all of those dimensions, including the financial ones. Um, but also, uh, I look upon uh, the discussions that are really getting underway this September as an opportunity to rebuild the kind of community um, spirit uh, and trust within the faculty so that people do feel that they are fully engaged in the process of plan making. Recognizing that we will probably still have to make some tough choices, some tough decisions here and there. Uh, but hopefully, if and when it comes to that, people will have a better sense that they had an opportunity to really influence the, uh, the discussion and the alternatives being considered. With respect to the School of Languages and Literatures, yes, this is an open dialogue. Everything is on the table. I was asked a, a similar question at the chair's meeting the other day. Um, so uh, this isn't just a question about how it should be designed, but are there, are there other alternatives that would um, uh, avoid having to make those same kinds of structural changes? It's a wide open discussion, and I really do honestly and meaningfully welcome those kinds of uh, inputs. As I say, I've been very encouraged by the kinds of conversations I've already had in places like Complit, East Asian, uh, and soon with the other uh, language units around us. Um, but, uh, and I have written today to the chairs of language departments inviting them to uh, re-engage with me in a, a collective discussion about alternative futures. So the answer is a resounding yes. Uh, the implication that uh, there have been no uh, signals from the university for new or notable support for arts and science, I think that is unfair to be, to be clear. Um, we have a provost who is, of course, uh, a member of the faculty. She has worked, but even if she wasn't, I think she has worked very hard to um, rebalance some of the key parameters in the university budget model to um, respect the fact that, on the one hand, arts and science has been in dire straits financially, and on the other, uh, to acknowledge the hard work and the difficult decisions that have been undertaken already within the faculty to, to try and do as much as it can within its own means to try to improve our situation. Um, and this is uh, a very useful thing uh, for a provost to be able to point to when she's telling deans from other divisions that um, their um, uh, net benefit from key uh, funds like the university fund is going down over time. And we have seen very significant movement in the last two or three years in that regard, and I have every reason to expect that that will continue. Finally, with respect to Latin American studies, here um, we have decided to um, stop the process which we started uh, on, uh, at the beginning of the fall um, and to take the year to in, uh, engage the members of the Latin American Studies community within arts and science and beyond if, if it makes sense to do so, uh, to talk about uh, the right institutional home for it. Um, so we will be restoring the full budget for the uh, program for this year. And we will be uh, working hard to find a director for the program. Um, and then welcome the discussion um, with many of the constituencies that you suggested to me in your letter over the weekend, Ken, um, about what makes sense, what's the best way to strengthen this program. 